complete misunderstanding of the benefits of the program and how much it would really positively affect um, across the board type of jobs, everywhere from the creative community to the street jobs and blue collar stuff. I was really proud to be a part of that. I think um, it's amazing. Uh, it's really working. I love that part. You can get criticized a lot of times for a lot of programs in the state that somebody can pick and pick and pick at and claim that it isn't working. This one is actually really working and it's putting people to work with real jobs with decent wages and uh, they're getting great experience and a lot of them are going to get to Hollywood with you and work out of Iowa in the process. I did take yeah. a couple of PAs from Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> Tom. Um, I'm Tom Wheeler. I'm the manager of the Iowa Film Office. Um, uh, I've been there since the inception of the program, obviously, and, and have had the great pleasure of working with the folks here at this table and many of you in the audience. Um, it has been certainly been an interesting uh, road to travel as the program has uh, developed, um, and it is uh, certainly you know continuing to evolve, and we're taking into consideration uh, much of what the other states have done, what the economy is, is doing, and uh, making sure we have a competitive uh, product to put out there in the marketplace. I can attest to what Becky is saying in terms of the uh, interest in Los Angeles, primarily where all the products are coming from, and uh, what Terry was saying in terms of being unable to get a hold of me kind of backs up what Becky is saying because the, the, the flood of interest has been really a flood. It's been since uh, probably April or May, and uh, the interest level has been sustained. We, you know, we had 20 applications for the uh, program this month. We kind of changed the way we handle it, and we have a little bit more strict requirements to to move forward, but we still had 20 applications. So it, it's definitely a, a very competitive program. Uh, we've done, you guys have done an excellent job of providing the services to those projects, and that is really what the reputation is and what the buzz is. It's not just that there's credits, go get your free handout, it's that there's a system there that includes the incentive program, but it also includes the infrastructure so that you can actually get the product produced and into the marketplace. So, uh, you know, I, I'm very proud to be up here and uh, I very much enjoy getting to this point. Excellent. So, um, I'm, it looks like a, people are here pre-season and fairly astute and dialed into the whole field community. I think that one thing I would say is that, to um, uh, Mark's point, is that when we were working on the final season, it was truly a a manufacturing business. I mean, it's just sexy, there's the cameras, there's the stars, but there are also 100 plus hotel rooms, you know, 80 rent -a cars, 10 box pants, and those go on for six weeks. So if you start adding that up, that's like a convention coming to town and camping out. Uh, I'd like to start with Becky, and let's talk about the, the environment that you were looking for when you were in the planning process. If you could sort of expound upon your decision making processes when you're looking at, I need to go make a movie. Where do I want to make it? How do I go about making a decision? Um, I, I think that, you know, obviously you know what your script is and you know if it's all interiors, then you can make it in any sound stage or any makeshift sound stage that's, you know, reasonably quiet. But if you have exteriors and you have specific needs because geographically it calls for something, then you're going to want to, to make that happen. Although, again, we all know that um, Mexico and South America have been made in the, in the desert outside of Los Angeles many, many times. Uh, but I did really want to do the, the rural landscape of Iowa, and I, I, I've really been disappointed in the past with films like, I, I was mentioning today on a radio show, you know, What's Eating Gilbert Grape is shot in Texas, and that's supposed to be Iowa, and I think, you know, anyone who has a passion for the green lands of Iowa knows that Texas, you know, rarely looks anything like Iowa. So I wanted to have that landscape. But when you decide to shoot here, you have to have the infrastructure. And I think Vaughn, that's what he's referring to. You have to figure out whether you're really going to have the housing to set people up in. Um, are there enough lights? One of the things that, you know, just in terms of electrical, um, where are you going to get that stuff? Is it going to be viable in Iowa? Now, at the time, all of those things were critically important to us because to take advantage of the tax incentives, we needed to use um, people and equipment from within Iowa. But then, then we found out that, that in terms of major lighting packages that would take care of our needs, and we were a small indie film, um, we could get them over in the Quad Cities area, or we could get them from a, a group that has a relationship between Des Moines and uh, Omaha. So those were our two choices. So it worked out well for us because George Benedict ended up being my gaffer. I don't know if any of you guys know him, but he's got the full package for what I needed 
um, and whatever else he couldn't serve me with, I found somewhere that we put into his package. In terms of the cameras, I shot because of my television experience and because it was an 18-day indie shoot, I shot with two HD cameras. Um, I do a lot of multiple camera shooting, so I was able to do this comedy with two cameras. And really, most features now are going to incorporate more than one camera because you can make it quick and you can do your angles on it. So I was able to get all of my cameras and extremely good lenses out of Des Moines. But if you have more than one production taking place at a time, which is what Tom is dealing with, you've got to have more than the infrastructure for just one film. But those were the things I needed. I needed a great art director. I was very lucky to get somebody out of Des Moines who was an enormously talented guy who hadn't had a lot of opportunity to do film, but I was more than happy to bring him on and he was great. My production designer was out of Los Angeles, but my art director was out of Des Moines. And then one place where I tried extremely hard to get somebody in Iowa and it didn't work out was costume design and wardrobe. There are about five people with great reputations in theater in Iowa who were all booked. So I had to take somebody out of Los Angeles for wardrobe and for production design, but I worked really hard to try to find somebody in Iowa. I got a great sound crew out of Iowa. These are things that you have to have that you have to put in place from the get-go. I got a good production manager from Iowa for the office who learned a lot on the job but had enough experience to, to really fit in and to do well in that position. I had a big cast. I cast all of the extras in Iowa and there were a lot of great people. We had so many people through Deb Copeland who wanted to be extras that we had a, a line in McGregor going down the street and around the street that I think was three hours long. People waited to just for, to be extras. And then we had about eight good speaking roles in the film that were SAG eligible. It was a SAG film that we cast in Iowa along with about seven actors from Los Angeles who we needed for the variety of reasons that, that I think if you've even begun to explore this, you know that it is important to have people with some kind of name or credibility, um, unless you get someone who is so phenomenal and unique that they are going to make their career out of that film. But, but for the most part, you need at least some re name recognition. My Iowa actors were so good that they fit in beautifully with the LA actors, and I would argue that people would have a very hard time, except for the name recognition of my LA actors, knowing who were the Iowa actors. And a lot of these people come out of theater, but they're keenly interested in film. I actually have an actor here who is a Los Angeles-based actor who grew up in Iowa, and has a very good career in LA, Nicholas Downs. And he's also he's an actor, but he's producing a film as well. And so I got him from Los Angeles, but he came back to Iowa to, to shoot with me, and, he has remarked several times that the Iowa cast were outstanding. Um, so, so when I'm looking at a film too, and I hope I wasn't running too long there, when I'm looking for a project, that's the infrastructure that I need. That's the basic stuff that I need to make it happen in a place. Um, and Terry was a, a tremendous entree to McGregor, to all the bed and breakfast, to the hotel there. He knew everybody. Um, it's such a friendly environment that when we needed an ambulance for several evenings, the local hospital gave us their ambulance. We needed a police car that sat on set for two weeks. And that's just because of great local people who really want to get involved and who really enjoyed being a part of the process. So that is a given for me. They do not have, you know, in Iowa, whatever small town, my next script also takes place in a small town in Iowa, people are just not jaded. They're very fascinated. They're very willing to support and help. That is part of your infrastructure, local people who want to help you. And they, they were absolutely wonderful to us. It just was was really a dream. But, but again, to repeat, you need all of those things. And Tom was essential. I mean, besides, you know, Terry being one of the, the great facilitators of this project, um, meeting Tom made such a big difference in my life and in this film. But I needed to depend on him a lot to guide me at the time. Um, so th does that kind of answer it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Sorry, I'm taking a long way to do this. I'm sorry, you're the director. Yeah. <laughs> These guys get cut off. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, we talk about money every day. Yeah. Every day. Um, so Terry, talk, talk to me about all the stuff that, that uh, talk to everybody here. Let's talk about what had to happen to facilitate all that infrastructure. Because you're, one, it's, it's a fairly remote location. Walk us through the, the processes of, right, here's the film, here's the shooting script, and here's the plan. Where do we go from there? A lot of drivers. A lot of Yeah, well, uh, Cost first, money. Thing, first thing I did was look at, at the production budget and look at all the different classifications. I mean, we had a transportation director, and he ended up hiring, you know, four or five, four or five people, and they used their own cars and charges the very minimal mileage amount, you know, and 